politicians realize that nonverbals are important. And so when they choose an outfit, when they choose how they're going to come out, whether or not they're gonna be smiling or shaking hands. One thing I can assure you, this has been rehearsed many times. It is theater. It's absolute theater. And one of the things that we will be looking for is how well these actors do their job. My name is Joe Navarro and for 25 years I was a spy catcher with the FBI and I am a nonverbal communications expert. As we approach the height of the political season, the question I'm asked is, you know, what do you look for in the body language of the people that will be in the debate? I look at everything that's involved because we have to look at all the nonverbals. We always notice when the candidates come on stage, uh, they're always waving at somebody in the audience or pointing a finger and, and so forth. Sometimes these are actually bogus gestures because they know the cameras in the audience will take pictures anytime there's a large gesture. And so they may actually do these things with no one in mind. You'll notice that rarely are debaters allowed to stand or sit close to each other. Usually there's at least seven to 10 feet of space. And the reason for that is debaters actually don't want you to see that there's a height difference. And so by separating the two uh, individuals, we don't notice that difference. You'll see an unusual amount of the color blue in the background, somewhere between the color of the ocean and the sky which is soothing to the human brain. The wearing of a navy blue suit, white shirts, often a red or burgundy tie. Subconsciously, we see the significance of that because it is what we see in the American flag, red, white, and blue. What's really become ubiquitous is the lapel pin of the American flag. This is something that 30 years ago, even 20 years ago, we hardly saw, but now it's almost part of our attire. You know, if you think about it, is someone less patriotic because on this day they're not wearing the American flag? Of course not. This is reaching out to you at a subconscious level. It's part of the theater part of the orchestration, which um, we now uh, demand. We're looking for their behaviors to see, are these consistent with what we have seen in the past? We certainly shouldn't be using body language to try to determine if they're speaking the truth. These are orchestrated events, and that's not what we use body language for. We use body language to supplement and confirm what we are seeing. Are the words being supported by the gestures or are their gestures taking away from their words? What I look for is as the moderator asks a question, do I see lip biting? Do I see any kind of ventilating behavior such as pulling on the collar? Do I see any kind of facial distress? Do I see furrowing of the forehead? They can in fact take care of it if he just stay out of the way. Oh, Look here. Oh really? Here, oh really? Here's but the that, thing. That, that, anything that might indicate to me that the individual doesn't like the question he or she is being asked. Would you who shut is up, your, man. Listen, who is your... The other thing I look for is any kind of hesitation, throat clearing. Are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists? Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, but do it? Perhaps the raising of a shoulder, the lowering of a shoulder. Stand back and stand by. Anything that conveys lack of confidence. I want to see the hands. I want to see those thumbs that come up because when we're confident, the thumbs pop up. When we lack confidence, they come down. I want to see if there's any kind of steepling. Steepling is a high indicator of confidence. Or do we see the interlacing of the fingers, which is I'm struggling with something or I'm having difficulty. One of the ones that you may not even think about, nothing will ever be said, but you'll see behaviors like the light touching of the eye, 
with the fingertip. This is both a blocking behavior and a comforting behavior. One of the facial nerves that attends to the eyelid, the minute we put pressure on that nerve, it begins to send messages to the brain to calm down. What in essence they're saying is, I screwed up or I really don't like that. One of the things that happens in political debates are the things that we never planned for. For instance, in 2016, now President Trump walking behind Hillary Clinton during the debates, it almost looked like he was stalking her. I mean, I can just imagine me trying to talk to the camera right now with somebody loitering behind me. That actually actuates a limbic response. So we may see behaviors that arise as a result of the action of another candidate. And we certainly saw that in 2016 when uh, some candidates refused to shake the hands of others or when humor was used when it really wasn't well intended. And that's when we see authenticity. That's when we really see what is in the heart and the mind and the sentiment of this individual and how they react to it. Gestures and communication are all intertwined. They're not two separate things. We know that because we've done research and when we restrict people's hands, they in fact have less recall, they're in fact less energetic and they communicate much less. We used to say, you know, when somebody in authority gestures, they need to gesture wide and they need to gesture smoothly. And of course, in the Zoom world, those gestures need to be up here where people can see them. Humans are so sensitive to nonverbals that if I were to point my finger at the audience and say, you, we actually have a visceral reaction to that, which is usually very negative. Now think about how many times a school teacher has called on us and gone like that. We know that if we turn that gesture into an open palm vertical gesture, we like that, we prefer that. Probably the most popular one is this thumb gesture that you often see. The candidate is making a point and the thumb is just barely sticking out from beyond the index finger. Anytime we grasp something, we're saying, I'm talking to you about something that's important to me. I'm sort of grasping it, which is to be differentiated, for instance, for when we talk and we say with precision, so this is a precision grip. I want you to think about this. So some of the other gestures we'll see is the open palm gesture. It shows that we're open, that we are receptive. The palms are up, the fingers are wide. Um, this is uh, very appealing. Some of the other gestures we may see is uh, if the person is doing this. So normally a baton gesture is a cadence behavior that denotes, I am asking you to come visit me. But when we do it this way, what we're in fact uh, saying, if we slow it down, is I'm really not so much behind that because it's literally pushing away rather than being receptive. The other behavior we may see is um, the touching of the heart and the chest which we often see portrayed as so-called honesty displays. They are in fact neutral because I've seen both individuals that are guilty of crimes and the innocent use this gesture. So it gives the appearance of being honest, but it doesn't mean that they're being honest. So one of the questions I'm asked is, do politicians rehearse their hand gestures. Some do, some don't. Some absolutely refuse to receive any kind of training. Others are well coached. The question is, you know, how much of it is authentically theirs and how much of it is uh, borrowed. Usually if they've been in office a long time or if they've been in politics for a long time, they will be reluctant to change any of their nonverbals. Let's look at President Trump's gestures. His most favored one is to talk with the index finger to the thumb. And one glorious nation under God. Sometimes he does the elbow flop as he's emphasizing. I don't see any protests. Oftentimes his eyelids will come down to block when he's hearing something he doesn't uh, like. You can see the when he pinches the corner of his mouth, 
when he's being sarcastic or exercising disdain or contempt. He does the lip purse when he disagrees or doesn't like a question being asked. And then of course he does the lip pull when he definitely doesn't like the question being asked. And if you notice, anytime he's sitting in the White House surrounded by people, he always hugs himself. And yet when you compare him to when he's on his show, The Apprentice, he always has a territorial display. And you see this contrast and you have to ask yourself, why do we see this behavior uh, on a TV show and why we're not seeing this um, in, a, in a presidential uh, cabinet? Let's look at Joe Biden's gestures. He does a lot of lip touching. We call it a pensive behavior. You often see it as people are pondering. When he's making a point, uh, he tends to furrow his glabella. He squints his eyes. Voice often is lowered for emphasis. You should go out and vote. And as with many people, um, when something bothers him, the lips uh, disappear. And this is something that I'm often asked about, does this have anything to do with deception? And it has absolutely nothing to do with deception. These are the behaviors that we adopt and that we use that help us to communicate what we're thinking about at that moment. Rarely do people remember what is said, but we tend to remember the images. To this day, we still teach about uh, Governor Dukakis on a military tank wearing this tanker's helmet and how odd he looked. And, you know, we scoff sometimes at the nonverbals. And yet here was one that we can clearly show that just from appearing on that tank, it really diminished his posture. You know, some people see these behaviors as a shorthand. I wouldn't call it that. Behaviors, gestures, are part of communication. We have primarily communicated non-verbally. We find ourselves using these gestures all the time, and there's a reason for it. People usually respond to them. People that know us well respond to them. And so we don't separate them as ancillary to communication. They are in fact part of communication.